All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The sheriff has indicated to me that the jury has reached a unanimous verdict. And how I would like to proceed is, is as follows at this time. If the jury has selected a four person, at this time will that four person silently stand? Juror number two, you are now silently standing as a four person of the jury, and I have some very simple questions which are just yes or no. Mr. Four person, has the jury reached a unanimous verdict, yes or no? Yes. And Mr. Four person, have you signed and dated the verdict form? Yes. All right, sir, if you'll remain standing, and if you'll hand the verdict envelope to the sheriff and remain standing, I will take the jury's verdict. Mr. Foreman, in the state of North Carolina County of Wake, the Superior Criminal Court Division, file number 14 CRS 7299, we the jury by unanimous verdict find the defendant Edward Christopher Lawing to be guilty of first degree murder. This the 29th day of February signed by the four person of the jury with his printed name affixed. Mr. Foreman, is this the unanimous verdict of the jury? Yes. Thank you very much, sir. You may have a seat. Now, members of the jury, I need to address a question to all 12 of you. Members of the jury, your four person has just indicated to me that the unanimous verdict of the jury is that the defendant is guilty of first degree murder. If such was the unanimous verdict of the jury, if it was your individual verdict, and if it remains your individual verdict, would you please so indicate by raising your right hand? All right, let the record reflect that all 12 jurors have raised their right hand. Anything further about the verdict from the state? No, Your Honor. Anything further about the verdict from the defense? Uh, Your Honor, we would request the court to consider formally polling the jury. All right. Thank you very much. I will do that. Mr. Foreman, if you will please stand. You, as the foreman, have returned a verdict of guilty of first-degree murder. Is this your verdict, and do you still assent thereto? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Foreman. You may have a seat. Juror number one, if you'll please stand. Juror number one. The jury has returned as its verdict that the defendant is guilty of first-degree murder. Is this your verdict, and do you still assent thereto? Yes. Thank you, ma'am. You may have a seat. Juror number three, if you'll please stand for me. Juror number three, the jury has returned as its verdict that the defendant is guilty of first-degree murder. Is this your verdict, and you, do you still assent thereto? Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Juror number four. Juror number four, the jury has returned as its verdict that the defendant is guilty of first degree murder. Is this your verdict and do you still assent thereto? Yes. Thank you, sir. Juror number five. Juror number five, the jury has returned as its verdict that the defendant is guilty of first degree murder. Is this your verdict and do you still assent thereto? Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Juror number six. Juror number six, the jury has returned as its verdict that the defendant is guilty of first degree murder. Is this your verdict and do you still assent thereto? Yes, Thank you, ma'am. Juror number seven. Juror number seven, the jury has returned as its verdict that the defendant is guilty of first degree murder. Is this your verdict and do you still assent thereto? Yes. Thank you, sir. Juror number eight, you are now standing the jury has returned as its verdict that the defendant is guilty of first degree murder. Is this your verdict and do you still assent thereto? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Juror number nine. Juror number nine, the jury has returned as its verdict that the defendant is guilty of first degree murder. Is this your verdict and do you still assent thereto? Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Juror number 10. Juror number 10, the jury has returned as its verdict that the defendant is guilty of first degree murder. Is this your verdict, and do you still assent thereto? Juror number 11. Juror number 11, the jury has returned as its verdict that the defendant is guilty of first degree murder. Is this your verdict, and do you still assent thereto? <coughs> Thank you, ma'am. Juror number 12. Ma'am, the jury has returned as its verdict that the defendant is guilty of first degree murder. Is this your verdict, and do you still assent thereto? Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. 
All right, the polling of the jury having been concluded, is there anything further about the verdict from the defense? Yes, Your Honor, we would ask the court to consider setting aside the verdict in this case. All right, ma'am, that'll be denied. Sir. The jury having returned as its verdict that the defendant is guilty of first degree murder in a, in a verdict form properly signed and dated, and the jury having been polled and all 12 jurors having unanimously agreed that the defendant is guilty of first degree murder, the verdict is accepted by the court and is ordered recorded at this time. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I have called the alternates back into the jury room and they are present and my instructions go to not only the 12 of you who served to deliberate in this matter but also the, the two of you who gave your time to listen to this case. The court wants to thank you for your attention to the evidence in the case and I would like to personally thank you for your willingness to serve uh, on a jury. This does conclude your jury service. Uh, you may never again be called as jurors um, in your lifetime, but you can by law only be called sometime after the next two years. Uh, you have performed an important duty, no matter your verdict, uh, by being willing to serve as jurors to the citizens of Wake County and to the citizens of North Carolina. You're part of a system that dates back to 1169 that was brought to this country um, at the time of the American Revolution and has continued to exist in essentially its same form since then. So you've been, you're part of a system that is almost 800 years old and has existed in our country. My math is not very good. Almost 300 years. We couldn't do this without you. So all my instructions, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that you are no longer free to talk to anyone no longer apply. You're free to talk to anybody that you would like to, but uh, you don't have to talk to anyone. And along those lines, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and Mr. Foreman, you could indicate this to me, almost immediately before the time that the sheriff informed me that you all had reached a verdict in this case, the sheriff handed me a note from the jury I believe uh, it's in your handwriting that the jury does not want to talk to the media after the verdict. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. So I am informing the media of that at this time that the jury does not wish to speak to any member of the media. Um, but you're free to do whatever you would like. You're free to talk to anyone. You can talk to your family members. You can talk to the attorneys. You can talk to the witnesses, law enforcement officers and to each other and to anyone you would like to about this case. Uh, we will be uh, proceeding further in this case in just a moment. Uh, and if you would like to stay, as, as I had told you from the very beginning, the rules, my rules and the rules of the court are that the jurors can't be filmed uh, and you have not been filmed um, during this trial. But if you would like to stay for further proceedings, uh, we are going to proceed at this time. And what you should do is, uh, hopefully the sheriff's right back there, um, is go right back out the same door that you just came in and give the, juror, give the sheriff your juror badges um, and go all the way back around and come in the back door. And if you'll sit on the, the back row, I'm not trying to consign you to the back of the classroom. It's just that if you're on the back row, you have no chance of being on camera. Um, but you don't have to stay. You're just welcome to stay. And I'll wait for any of you who want to stay a reasonable amount of time before we proceed further. If at the end of the uh, case you need a note for your work or otherwise to show that you've been on jury duty, we do have those available from Madam Clerk. Uh, and when the case is done, you can come up to the clerk and we'll give you notes if you need them. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You are excused from being a jury in this case and go with the sheriff and come on back around if you'd like to stay. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.
Your Honor, um, the state is ready to pray judgment. I've provided this to counsel. I, if I may approach, I know it's technically not necessary. But... All right, sir. I'll also tell you that if Your Honor is inclined that um, Ms. Jones and Ms. Carter, who had testified earlier, did indicate that they would like to say something to the court, um, her, Ms. Uh, Queen's brother is present and was given that option, but has decided that he would rather not speak to the court at this time. Your Honor. Right. First of all, um, have you seen the uh, prior record level worksheet? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, do you agree that those matters exist? <laughs> yes, sir. All right. The uh, record would indicate two prior uh, driving while impaired in 2008 and 2009 and a misdemeanor larceny in January the 30th of 1997, giving your client three points, although given the classification of the crime in this case, it would not make a difference as to sentencing. but. Uh, the court does find that he has three prior points. Um, Ms. Visser, you would like to you would like to say something, ma'am. You don't have to give your full argument at this time, or I I just noticed that you wanted to say something there. Uh, yes, Your Honor, I just was going to suggest to the court that uh, given the verdict, that uh, perhaps we could just. Uh, go straight to the verdict judge well given that given that um, these uh, people that the DA has indicated wish to speak have been here throughout the trial I do think it would be appropriate to hear from them although it don't it won't prejudice the court in any way because there is a mandatory sentence in this matter but um, Mr. Latour, um, it'd be fine for them to simply come forward and just stand beside you. They don't have to be placed under oath. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Now, ma'am, I know who you are, right. but if you will tell your name for the nice court reporter. Um, I'm Stephanie Jeffries Jones. It's okay. I'm crying now. And um, Coy was my friend. She was my best friend. And her life mattered. And her death. Have a mini suburbia. We're gonna have a mini suburbia. We're all gonna live next to each other and uh, have kids and support her and all that. You know, we had it planned. Twenty year olds, we had it planned real good. But I will never forget the day my friend left. I didn't even go to the club that night. It was Thursday night, college night. We didn't go to the club. We waited all night for her. And I just want to let you know that she was so loved. You would have loved her. She was so good. She was such a good person. And she was honest and nice all the time. It was so, like, unbelievable how nice she was. I thought something was wrong with her at first. But that's just how she was. And so that's how we all became as friends. 
And so we held each other to the same standard. And we honor that honor system that she created. And I just want to let you know that she was loved. And I still love her. And I miss her. And I miss that I didn't get to get the, help her take care of the child that she loved. And she was going to love that baby. And we were going to help her. And so I just want to let you know she meant something to me. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Ms. Jeffries, I know who you are, too. But if you'll please tell me what was going on. Barbara. I'm Barbara Carter. Love <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say the same thing that Stephanie said. Coy was our best friend. And this has haunted us for 20 years. Haunted us. Not just that she was murdered, but having to live with knowing that we weren't there for her the moment that she knew that she was in trouble, the moment that she knew that there was no way out, <laughs> and having to live with that she knew at some point that she wasn't going to make it out alive and that we weren't there because she was always there for us. And I, none of this will ever bring her back. But I just want to thank your honor for how you've handled this trial. And I want to thank the district attorney and his team and especially Detective Norm Grodi because he promised us that her life mattered and he never wavered in that promise and i just want to say thank you thank you thank you ma'am Mr. Latour, anything further, sir? No, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Fisher, ma'am, I'd be happy to hear from you. Thank you, Your Honor. Judge, obviously you only have one alternative at this point. I just wanted to let you know that Mr. Long has been a hardworking citizen for almost 20 years now, was arrested right outside his work, married, had two kids, has basically been law-abiding, good, solid person for 18 years now. And I understand that nothing I can say or he can say can change what you have to do now. But I just wanted to let the court know that. All right. Your Honor, my client did wish to be heard by the court. All right. Mr. Long, sir, um, you don't have to say anything if you don't want to, but if you would like to, this would be the chance to do it yes sir I just wish to say I did not do this sir that's all I can say
stand for me, sir. All right, in this matter, Madam Clerk, Mr. Edwin Christopher Loing, having pled not guilty and having been found guilty uh, by a jury of his peers of first degree murder from an offense occurring on May the 16th of 1996, uh, the court has received a uh, prior record level worksheet, but it is irrelevant to this uh, sentencing. The court makes no written findings because the term <clears throat> imposed in this matter is for a class A felony. Therefore, having been found guilty of first degree murder, the defendant in this case is sentenced to life imprisonment without parole for a class A felony in the custody of the North Carolina Division of Adult Corrections. And Your Honor, at this time, the defendant enters notice of appeal in open court. All right. The defendant in open court gives notice of appeal. A no further formal notice is necessary. The court appoints the uh, public, the North Carolina appellate defender to perfect the appeal and represent Mr. Loing. The court finds as a fact that Mr. Loing is indigent at this time. The sheriff, he is in your custody, sir. Thank you. All right, there being no further business before the court this afternoon, is that correct, Mr. Dia? That's correct, Your Honor. All right, court will be in recess until 9.30 Tuesday morning.